take a minute to inform you of the existence of Representative Katie Porter out of Orange County, California. Uh, she represents District 45. If you don't know who she is, you need to know. She's such a badass. I love everything about her. She's incredibly intelligent. She's dynamic. She's engaging. She is forceful when she needs to be. She's tactful when she needs to be. She's great. She's everything. And she actually takes her job seriously, which is a lot more than most Congress people can say. Last week, during an oversight committee hearing with Shell, the oil company, she basically ripped them to shreds with her visuals. Uh, also her cadence and all of her talking points, but the visuals, I think, are something she does that are extremely effective and I would like to see more politicians use because so many of these hearings and issues and policies and whatnot are very high level. You know, it involves a lot of intellectual commitment, understanding, comprehension of the issues. And that's not something most people have the time or frankly interest in nor should they necessarily have to, right? That's why we elect these people in the first place. I do think it's important that there's still a connection between your representative and the issues. And almost in a way, creating an understanding on a simpler level of what exactly we're talking about and the significance of the stats or, um, the numbers or the policy provisions so that it really makes sense and resonates. And she's known for doing visuals. She has like a really famous whiteboard that she uses a lot. Um, and I think this is just something she does extremely effectively, but she took it to the next level last week um, because this was a virtual hearing. So she was in her home in Orange County California and use M&Ms as a way to uh, create a visual of the lack of renewable energy uh, policy or spending that Shell is actually engaging in despite the optics they're trying to create that say otherwise and say, oh, we're committed to expanding renewables and but in actuality, it's like this much of their budget. So she used M&Ms in order to create the visual for that because the number on the surface for this year is like two to $3 billion, which I feel like when you hear that, it's like, oh, that's great. That's a lot of money. But when you actually break down the total expenditures of Shell, it's pennies of their budget. It's like pennies. But then they use that in order to create this optic that they're committed to investing in renewable energy um, and basically kind of do like a Wizard of Oz sort of thing where everything looks great, but then behind the curtain, it's just like business as usual. And so she really pulled back the curtain on that um, with this M&M visualization. Representing that with this container of M&Ms. Each m m represents about $50 million in spending. Ms. Watkins, how much has Shell said it will spend in the near term on oil, gas, and chemical operations? I, I think you just said we're going to be spending between $18 and $20 billion uh, this year. That's near term on total spending. How much on oil, gas, and chemical operations? We're going to be spending... Okay. Well, according to your annual report, you said you're going to spend 16 to 17 billion for oil, gas, and chemical, with another three billion dollars for marketing. How much is Shell spending to spend on renewable energy? This year, we'll be spending between two and three billion dollars. Two and three billion on renewables and energy solutions. In your testimony, you said, "quote." Meeting the demand for reliable energy while simultaneously addressing climate change is a huge undertaking and one of the defining challenges of our time. Shell 
has made these promises before. Shell pledged to spend $6 billion between 2017 and 2020 on renewable energy. How much of that did Shell actually spend? The answer is about half. Ms. Watkins, does this look like a huge undertaking to you? This is greenwashing. Shell is trying to fool people into thinking that it's addressing the climate crisis, but what it's actually doing is to continue to put money into fossil fuels. And then also she used rice um, in order to, vi to create a visual around uh, land leasing that Shell was doing because basically they lease land um, for oil extraction purposes. And a lot of these land leases go unused and basically like all these public lands that should be and are supposed to be for the people are literally just sitting there. And so she created a visual using rice to show how, just how much land they're leasing that's going unused. Used. How many acres of public land are already leased by fossil fuel companies and not even used yet? Just available for drilling whenever you decide. Congresswoman, again, I, I think you have a fundamental misunderstanding as to how this process works and the time and resources. Reclaiming my time, takes. reclaiming my time. The answer is 13.9 million acres. To visualize how much land that is, if each grain of rice were one acre, that would be 479 pounds of rice. The American Petroleum Institute even opposed pausing more leasing on our lands. They even sued to stop it because apparently this acreage wasn't enough. Mr. Worth, you serve on the American Petroleum Institute's executive committee. Do you support a pause on new oil and gas leases on federal land? Congresswoman, access to uh, resource in this country is essential to ensure the energy security of our country and uh, Reclaiming my time. Mr. Lawler, do you support a pause? The administration, and and it's, our, it's our hope that the, that the uh, pause ends soon. We think it's important to go Reclaiming forward. My time. Thank you for your answer. The answer there is no. Mr. Woods, do you support a pause on new federal and gas leases? No. Ms. Watkins, do you support a pause on new federal and gas leases? No, I do not, because I think it's important. You already have 13.9 million acres. This is equivalent to Maryland and New Jersey combined. How much more do you need? How much more acreage? You have two of our 50 states at a price that makes the Louisiana Purchase look like a ripoff, and you're not even using it. What more do you need? Iowa, Colorado, Virginia? It was just astounding. And just the way that she also just handles the mic, she doesn't, because a lot of times, people when they're in these hearings will try to run out the clock and give really vague or extremely verbose answers when it's not necessary when someone's asking like a direct yes or no question and they do that because there's a certain amount of time that you have for your questioning so she stops all of that from happening which you can kind of see that they're trying to do by reclaiming her time from the oil executives when she needs to, forcing direct answers, already having the answers to the questions that she's asking so that when they try to skirt around the actual question, she can just actually insert the answer already. It's brilliant. It's brilliant work. And I just have so much appreciation for Katie Porter and what she's doing and just how much work and thought she's really putting into her job. Um, some people are saying she should run for president in 2024. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Um, obviously, representatives in Congress a lot of times do run for president, but more with political ambition to maybe hold a cabinet position or gain name recognition or something of the like since it's a little bit more rare to go from a congressional house seat to a presidential nomination than say like a senator, right? I think she could do it. Um, and we need new blood out there, clearly. We need new blood. We need fresh faces. Um, and I think we need more people who 
look like the average American. There's a really famous quote from Shirley Chisholm, and I'm forgetting the exact quote, but basically it's, it's about the fact that we should have normal everyday people of all walks of life who are LGBTQ, who are people of color, who are women, who are disabled, who are poor, holding positions of power in our government. And that we would have a better country if, if that was the case. And I completely agree with that logic. And she's someone who is a completely normal average American. She's very intelligent though. She did go to Harvard Law School. Um, but before she was in Congress, she was a practicing lawyer and a mom, a single mom. Um, she was in an abusive relationship that she ended up, um, no, it was a marriage. So she ended up getting a divorce about eight years ago, I believe. And is just basically like an average person. Um, and ran for Congress without taking any corporate PAC money, I believe in 2018 and won her house seat. So she's just so incredible. And um, I think you should really look into her if you don't know who she is yet. She doesn't get as much attention as like, say AOC or Ilhan Omar or Marjorie Taylor Greene for that matter, but she definitely probably deserves more than any of them.